Seventh grade. Open up resources, illustrative mathematics. Unit one, practice lessons one through 12. Tutorial and review. Unit one, lesson one. What are scaled copies? Number one. Here is a figure that looks like the letter A, along with several other figures. Which figures are scaled copies of the original A? Explain how you know. First, let's take a look at the original figure in the upper left. It's two units tall and two units wide. Now let's take a look at figure one directly below it. It's three units tall and two units wide. So that's not a scaled copy. Let's take a look at figure number two. Its height is four units and its width is four units. So yes, that is a scaled copy of the original figure. Let's take a look at figure three. Figure three is not symmetrical like the original figure, so that is not a scaled copy. Let's take a look at figure four. Its height is one unit and its width is one unit. So yes, that is a scaled copy. Number two, Tyler says that figure B is a scaled copy of figure A because all the peaks are half as tall. Do you agree with Tyler? Explain your reasoning. No, I don't agree with Tyler because figure B would need to be half as wide as well as half as tall. Number three, here is a picture of the Rose Bowl Stadium in Pasadena, California. Here are some copies of the picture. Select all the pictures that are scaled copies of the original picture. Here's a look at pictures A and B in comparison to the original picture outlined in green. Picture A appears to be a scaled copy because its height compared to the original picture looks just a little bit shorter and its width compared to the original picture also looks just a little bit shorter. But B is not. The height of picture B appears to be about the same, but the length of picture B is much shorter. Here's a look at pictures C and D. The height of picture C seemed to have gotten a little bit shorter, but the width of picture C seemed to have gotten a lot wider. Picture C does not look like a scaled copy of the original. When you look at picture D, its height looks like it got about the same percentage shorter as its width did. Picture D appears to be a scaled copy of the original. Number four, complete each equation with the number that makes it true. A, five times what number equals 15? Five times three equals 15. B, Four times what number equals 32? Four times eight equals 32. C. Six times what number equals nine? This illustration shows how six goes into nine one and a half times. Three is half as six, and three goes into nine three times. So six times three halves also equals nine. So six times one and a half, or six times 1.5, or six times three halves equals nine. D, 12 times what number equals three? That's the same as the equation 12 times y equals three y being the unknown number. We can solve for y by getting the y by itself. y equals 3 divided by 12. And 3 divided by 12 is the same as 3 twelfths. 3 twelfths can be simplified. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So y would equal 1 fourth. 12 times 1 fourth equals 3. And that's really the same as one-fourth of 12 is 3. Unit 1, Lesson 2. Corresponding Parts and Scale Factors. Number 1. 
The second eight-shaped polygon is a scaled copy of the first. A. Show one pair of corresponding points and two pairs of corresponding sides in the original polygon and its copy. Consider using colored pencils to highlight corresponding parts or labeling some of the vertices. I used blue and purple to highlight corresponding line segments and I used a red dot to identify a pair of corresponding points. B. What scale factor takes the original polygon to its smaller copy? Explain or show your reasoning. It is a one-fourth scale factor because the second image is four times smaller than the original. Number 2. Figure B is a scaled copy of figure A. Select all of the statements that must be true. Well, I can't select A because figure B could be either larger or smaller than figure A. I selected B because the shape wouldn't change. It would still have the same number of edges as figure A. I'm not selecting C because figure B wouldn't have the same size perimeter as figure A. The perimeter would either get larger or the perimeter would get smaller. I am selecting D because figure B will have the same number of angles as figure A. And I am selecting E because the angles in scaled copies still have the same measure as the original figure. Number 3. Polygon B is a scaled copy of Polygon A. A. What is the scale factor from Polygon A to Polygon B? Explain your reasoning. Well, the side length of 2 and 5 tenths from Polygon A increased to a side length of 5 on Polygon B, and that increased by a factor of 2, because 2 and 5 tenths times 2 equals 5. The scale is 2, because the 2 and 5 tenths unit line became 5 units, which is 2 times longer. B. Find the missing length of each side marked with a question mark in polygon B. I wrote an equation to represent the question mark on the left side of polygon B. 1 and 5 tenths times 2 equals the unknown amount. And the equation 2 and 5 tenths times 2 equals the unknown amount for the second question mark. 1 and 5 tenths times 2 equals 3. And 2 and 5 tenths times 2 equals 5. The question marks for the missing side lengths represent 3 and 5. C. Determine the measure of each angle marked with a question mark in polygon A. A scaled copy is a copy, so the angles are copied. The angles will still be 53 degrees and 82 degrees. Number 4. Complete each equation with a number that makes it true. A. 8 times what number equals 40? 8 times 5 equals 40. B. 8 plus what number equals 40? 8 plus 32 equals 40. C. 21 divided by what number equals 7? 21 divided by 3 equals 7. D. 21 minus what number equals 7? 21 minus 14 equals 7. E. 21 times what number equals 7? 21 times 1 third equals 7. Unit 1, Lesson 3, Making Scaled Copies. Number 1, 
Here are three polygons. Draw a scaled copy of polygon A using a scale factor of 2. The copy I've drawn has twice the width and twice the height. Draw a scaled copy of polygon B using a scale factor of 1 half. This scaled copy has half the width and half the height. Draw a scaled copy of polygon C using a scale factor of 3 halves or 1 and a half. This scaled copy has 1 and a half times the width and 1 and a half times the height. Number 2. Quadrilateral A has side lengths 6, 9, 9, and 12. Quadrilateral B is a scaled copy of quadrilateral A with its shortest side length of 2. What is the perimeter of quadrilateral B? I highlighted in green some important information. The shortest side length is 2. And the shortest side length of the original is 6. So it went from 6 to 2. 6 times what number equals 2? 6 times 1 third equals 2, since 2 is 1 third of 6. So we know that the scale factor is 1 third. So now we need to find the lengths of the other lines. 1 third of 9, 1 third of 9, and 1 third of 12. We can add those up and we'll find the perimeter. 1 third of 9 is 3. 1 third of 9 is 3, and 1 third of 12 is 4. Add up all these side lengths, and the perimeter is 12 units. Number 3. Here is a polygon on a grid. Draw a scaled copy of this polygon that has a perimeter of 30 units. What is the scale factor? Explain how you know. First, I want to find out how many units are in the perimeter. The original shape has a perimeter of 10 units. They're asking me to draw a scaled copy that has a perimeter of 30 units. So I need to go from a perimeter of 10 units to a perimeter of 30 units. 10 times what number equals 30? 10 times 3 equals 30 units. So we know it's going to have a scale factor of 3. 2 units times 3 equals 6 units. 3 units times 3 equals 9 units. 1 unit times 3 equals 3 units. 2 units times 3 equals 6 units. 1 unit times 3 equals 3 units. And finally, 1 unit times 3 equals 3 units. 6 plus 9 plus 3 plus 6 plus 3 plus 3 equals a perimeter of 30 units. Number 4. Priya and Tyler are discussing the figures shown below. Priya thinks that B, C, and D are scaled copies of A. Tyler says B and D are scaled copies of A. Do you agree with Priya or do you agree with Tyler? Explain your reasoning. Figure D is a scaled drawing of figure A with a scale factor of 2. Figures B and C are not scale drawings. The perimeter of A is 12 and the perimeter of D is 24. For figures B and C, I've outlined in green what the perimeter would look like if they were scale drawings. Figure A has a height and width of 3 by 3 and figure D has a height and width of 6 by 6. It turns out that both Priya and Tyler are wrong because D is the only scaled copy of A. Unit 1, Lesson 4, Scaled Relationships. Number 1. Select all statements that must be true for any scaled copy Q of polygon P. I did not select A because we don't know if all the side lengths are whole numbers. 
I did select B because we can see that all the angle measures are whole numbers. I selected C because Q has exactly one right angle located on the bottom left hand corner. I selected D because if the scale factor between P and Q is one fifth, then we would have to multiply the side lengths of P by one fifth to get the corresponding side length of Q. I didn't select E because you don't multiply the angle by the scale factor. The angle always stays the same. And I selected F because Q has two acute angles and three obtuse angles. Acute angles are any angles that are smaller than 90 degrees and obtuse angles are any angles that are larger than 90 degrees. Number two. Here is quadrilateral ABCD. Quadrilateral PQRS is a scaled copy of quadrilateral ABCD. Point P corresponds to point A, point Q to point B, point R to point C, and point S to point D. If the distance from point P to point R is three units, what is the distance from point Q to point S? Explain your reasoning. Since quadrilateral ABCD is shown, and A to C is actually six units, and A to C corresponds with P to R on the scaled copy, and they tell us that P to R is worth three units, and on quadrilateral ABCD the distance between B to D is also six units, so the scaled copy from Q to S would be three units. Quadrilateral PQRS must be a half scale of quadrilateral ABCD. That would be a scale factor of one half. That's why A to C is six units and P to R is three units. B to D is six units and Q to S is three units. Number three. Figure two is a scaled copy of figure one. A. Identify the points in figure 2 that correspond to the points A and C in figure 1. Label them P and R. What is the distance between P and R? Here are the points P and R that correspond with points A and C. The distance between points P and R is 6 units. B. Identify the points in figure 1 that correspond to the points Q and S in figure 2. Label them B and D. What is the distance between B and D? Here are the points B and D that correspond with points Q and S. The distance between B and D is 3 units. C. What is the scale factor that takes figure 1 to figure 2? On figure 1, the distance between points B and D is 3, and the distance between their corresponding points on figure 2, points Q and S, is 9, and 9 is 3 times greater than 3, so it would have a scale factor of 3. D. G and H are two points on figure 1, but they are not shown. The distance between G and H is 1. What is the distance between the corresponding points on figure 2? We've already figured out that the scale factor is 3. So if the distance between points G and H on figure 1 is 1 unit, then the corresponding distance on figure 2 would be 1 times 3, which is 3 units. Number 4. To make one batch of lavender paint, the ratio of cups of pink paint to cups of blue paint is 6 to 5. Find two more ratios of cups of pink paint to cups of blue paint that are equivalent to this ratio. Since one batch has a ratio of 6 to 5, Two batches would double that, so two batches would have a ratio of 12 to 10. 
and three batches would be three times greater than one batch. So three batches would have a ratio of 18 to 15. Seventh grade, Unit 1, Lesson 5. The size of the scale factor. Number 1. Rectangles P, Q, R, and S are scale copies of one another. For each pair, decide if the scale factor from one to the other is greater than one, equal to one, or less than one. A. From P to Q. The scale factor is greater than 1. Q is a larger scaled copy than P. B. From P to R. The scale factor is also greater than 1. R is a larger scaled copy than P. C. From Q to S. The scale factor is less than 1. S is a smaller scaled copy than Q. D. From Q to R. The scale factor is greater than 1. R is a larger scaled copy than Q. E. From S to P. This scale factor is equal to 1. P is the same size scale copy as S. F. From R to P. This scale factor is less than 1. P is a smaller scaled copy of R. And finally, G, from P to S. This scale factor is equal to 1. S is the same size scale copy of P. Number 2. Triangle S and Triangle L are scaled copies of one another. A. What is the scale factor from S to L? Going from S to L, the base was originally 2 and became 4, so the base doubled or multiplied by 2, and the height was originally 4 and became 8, so it also doubled. The scale factor from S to L is 2. B. What is the scale factor from L to S? Going from L to S, the base was 4 and became 2, and 2 is half of 4. The height was 8 and became 4, and 4 is half of 8. The scale factor from L to S is 1 half. C. Triangle M is also a scaled copy of S. The scale factor from S to M is 3 halves. What is the scale factor from M to S? The scale factor from M to S is 2 thirds. The scale factors are reciprocals of each other. For example, 3 halves times 2 thirds equals 1. That means that 2 thirds is the reciprocal of 3 halves. When you multiply a number by its reciprocal, the product is always 1. Number 3. Are two squares with the same side lengths scaled copies of one another? Explain your reasoning. Yes, the scale factor is 1. If the side lengths of two squares are the same lengths, then the squares would have the same dimensions and are scaled copies of one another. Number 4. Quadrilateral A has side lengths 2, 3, 5, and 6. Quadrilateral B has side lengths 4, 5, 8, and 10. Could one of the quadrilaterals be a scaled copy of the other? Explain. No. Numbers 2, 3, 5, and 6 can't be multiplied by the same number to become 4, 5, 8, 
and 10. For example, the side length 2 in red can be multiplied by 2 to become side length 4 in purple. So that would be a scale factor of 2. But if we continued with the scale factor of 2 and tried to multiply the 3 that's red, 3 times 2 would equal 6 and not the side length 5 in purple. Try it on the next one. Side length 5 in red times 2 would equal 10 and not the side length 8 in purple. And then side length 6 in red times 2 would equal 12 and not the side length 10 in purple. Number 5. Select all the ratios that are equivalent to ratio 12 to 3. Explain how you know. C, a 4 to 1 ratio, D, 24 to 6 ratio, and F, 1200 to 300 ratio. For C, both 4 and 1 can be multiplied by 3 to become 12 and 3. So a 4 to 1 ratio is equivalent to a 4 to 3 ratio. For D, both 24 and 6 can be divided by 2 to become 12 and 3. So a ratio of 24 to 6 is equivalent to a ratio of 12 to 3. For F, both 1,200 and 300 can be divided by 100 to become 12 and 3. So a 1,200 to 300 ratio is equivalent to a 12 to 3 ratio. Seventh grade, Unit 1, Lesson 6, Scaling and Area. Number 1. On the grid, draw a scaled copy of polygon Q using a scale factor of 2. Compare the perimeter and the area of the new polygon to those of Q. Here's a closer look at polygon Q. First, let's determine the perimeter. We can do this by following along the polygon's boundary line or perimeter and counting the number of units. As you can see here, polygon Q has a perimeter of 20 units. Since they're asking us to draw a scaled copy of polygon Q using a scale factor of 2, polygon Q's perimeter would be multiplied by 2, or the polygon's perimeter would be twice the size. Not only is the perimeter twice the size, but each line segment around the polygon is twice the size. Now let's compare areas. Let's take a look at the area of polygon Q. You can see I've added some red lines to make this shape into a rectangle. This rectangle has the dimensions of 7 by 3, 7 unit base and a 3 unit height. To find the area of this rectangle, I need to multiply the base times the height, or 7 times 3. The area of this rectangle is 21 square units. Now I have to subtract the area in red that I added when I turned it into a rectangle. After subtracting that, I'll have the area of the polygon. Since the area in red is a total of 5 square units, I need to subtract that from 21, which is the area of the rectangle. And 21 minus 5 is 16. The area of polygon Q is 16 square units. I'm going to apply this same technique on the scaled copy that I drew. The scaled copy has a base of 14 and a height of 6. The area will be the base times the height, and 14 times 6 is 84. Next we need to subtract the area in red so that we can find the area of the scaled copy of polygon Q. The area of the red regions totals 20 square units, and 84 square units minus 20 square units equals 64 square units. The area of the scaled copy of polygon Q is 64 square units. Number 2. 
A right triangle has an area of 36 square units. If you draw scaled copies of this triangle using the scale factors in the table, what will the areas of these scaled copies be? Explain or show your reasoning. We can start with the information that they've provided us in the table. On the left hand column is the scale factor. On the right hand column is the area of units squared. So with a scale factor of 1, or the original unit, the area is 36 square units, or 36 units squared. With a scale factor of 2, we'll use 2 to the power of 2 times 36, which means 2 times 2 times 36, and 2 times 2 times 36 equals 144. So when the scale factor is 2, the area of this right triangle will be 144 square units. When the scale factor is 3, we'll use 3 squared times 36, which means 3 times 3 times 36. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 36 equals 324. So when the scale factor is 3, the area is 324 square units or 324 units squared. When the scale factor is 5, I'll use 5 squared, which is 5 to the power of 2, times 36. So 5 times 5 times 36. 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 36 is 900. So when the scale factor is 5, the area of this right triangle is 900 square units, or 900 units squared. When the scale factor is 1 half, I'll use 1 half to the power of 2 times 36. 1 half times 1 half times 36. 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, or half of a half is 1 fourth. And 1 fourth times 36, or 1 fourth of 36, equals 9. So when the scale factor is 1 half, the area of this right triangle is 9 units squared, or 9 square units. When the scale factor is 2 thirds, I'll use 2 thirds to the power of 2 times 36, or 2 thirds square times 36. And 2 thirds times 2 thirds is 4 ninths. 4 ninths times 36 equals 16. So when the scale factor is 2 thirds, the area of this right triangle is 16 square units or 16 units squared. Number 3. Diego drew a scaled version of a polygon P and labeled it Q. If the area of polygon P is 72 square units, what scale factor did Diego use to go from P to Q? Explain your reasoning. On this grid, we can see Polygon Q. This is what Diego drew. It's a scaled version of Polygon P. In order to find out what scale factor Diego used to go from the original Polygon P to his scaled version of Polygon P, which he labeled Q, I need to find the area of Polygon Q. And to do this, I'm going to decompose this polygon a bit to turn it into a shape that's easier for me to recognize. I chose to move this section over here to make one full square unit. Now it'll be a lot easier to count. It looks like we have a total of four and a half square units. So now we know that Polygon Q has a total area of four and a half square units. I decided to organize this information in a chart. So we're still looking at number three. The original polygon P has an area of 72 units squared and a scale factor of 1. Beneath it, we'll put polygon Q, Diego's version. We decomposed and rearranged Diego's version and discovered that it had an area of 4.5 square units. You'll see I've written at the bottom that 4.5 divided by 72 will provide us with the scale factor. When you use a calculator, you'll use 4.5 divided by 72. And 4.5 divided by 72 equals 0 0.25, which is 25 hundredths, or 1 fourth. 
the scale factor that Diego used to take polygon P to polygon Q was one fourth. Number four, here is an unlabeled polygon along with its scaled copies, polygon A through D. For each copy, determine the scale factor. Explain how you know. The original polygon is the unlabeled polygon in the upper left corner. I'm going to start with its scaled copy, polygon A. I've drawn this line segment on the left in red, and I've drawn the corresponding line segment on the scaled copy A also in red. The total length for this line segment on the original copy is two units. The length for the scaled copy A is just one unit. Since one unit is half of two units, the scale factor is one half. Let's take a look at the scale copy B, and you'll notice that same line segment is one, two, three, four, four units long, compared to the original two units. The length doubled. Four is twice the length of two. So scaled copy B was drawn with a scale factor of two. Let's take a look at scale copy C. This same corresponding length on scale copy C is three units long compared to the two units on the original polygon. This corresponding side length is one and a half times as long as the original side length, so its scale factor is one and a half. The corresponding side length on figure D, or scale copy D, is exactly the same length as the original unlabeled polygon, so it has a scale factor of 1. Here's a closer look. Scale copy A has a scale factor of 1 half, and scale copy B has a scale factor of 2, and scale copy C has a scale factor of 1 and 1 half, and scale copy D as a scale factor of 1. Number 5. Solve each equation mentally. A. 1 7th times x equals 1. In this case, x equals 7 because 1 7th times 7 equals 1. B. x times 1 eleventh equals 1. In this case, x equals 11 because 11 times 1 eleventh equals 1. C. 1 divided by 1 fifth equals x. In this case, x equals 5 because 1 divided by 1 fifth equals 5. 7th grade, Unit 1, Lesson 7, Scale Drawings. Number 1. The Westerlin Lysander was an aircraft used by the Royal Air Force in the 1930s. Here are some scale drawings that show the top, side, and front views of the Lysander. Use the scales and the scale drawings to approximate the actual lengths of A. The wingspan of the plane to the nearest foot. When I line the 10 feet scales up against the scale drawing, I can fit about four and a half of the scales up there, and each scale is worth 10. So 10 times four is 40, plus half of 10 is 45. So I'd say that the wingspan of the plane is approximately 45 to 46 feet. B, use the scales and the scale drawings to approximate the actual lengths of the height of the plane to the nearest foot. 
When I line the scales up vertically against the height of the scale drawing of the plane, 10 feet fits in with just a little bit left over. So I'd say that's approximately 12 feet. The height of the plane is approximately 12 feet. C. Use the scales and the scale drawings to approximate the actual lengths of the length of the Lysander to the nearest meter. When I line the scales up against the scale drawing of the Lysander, I could fit more than one 7 meter scale. I broke the second scale up into seven 1 meter sections, and it looks like the rest of the plane takes up approximately two more meters. 7 meters plus 2 meters equals 9 meters, so the length of the Lysander is approximately 9 meters. Number 2. A blueprint for a building includes a rectangular room that measures 3 inches long and 5 and 5 tenths inches wide. The scale for the blueprint says that 1 inch on the blueprint is equivalent to 10 feet in the actual building. What are the dimensions of this rectangular room in the actual building? One inch on the blueprint equals 10 feet in the actual building. Three inches in the blueprint equals 30 feet in the actual building. And five and five tenths inches equals 55 feet in the actual building. So the dimensions for the actual building are 30 feet by 55 feet. Number three. Here is a scale map of Lafayette Square, a rectangular garden north of the White House. A. The scale is shown in the lower right corner. Find the actual side lengths of Lafayette Square in feet. The scales are 200 feet long and I managed to fit four of them along the bottom. So I'd say that the length is approximately 800 feet long. Along the width of the garden, I was only able to fit about two and a half of the scales. 200 plus 200 plus 100 is 500, so the width of the garden is approximately 500 feet wide. B. Use an inch ruler to measure the line segment of the graphic scale. About how many feet does one inch represent on this map? It depends on how large the copy of your map is, but I'd say one inch is approximately 300 feet. Number four. Here is triangle A. Lynn created a scale copy of triangle A with an area of 72 square units. A. How many times larger is the area of the scaled copy compared to that of triangle A? Before we can compare the two areas, we need to figure out the area of triangle A. Triangle A has a base of three units and a height of three units. The area of a triangle is base times height divided by two, or half of base times height. Three times three is nine, nine divided by two is four and five tenths. The area of triangle A is four and five tenths square units. The scaled copy of triangle A that Lynn made had an area of 72 units, and 72 divided by 4 and 5 tenths equals 16. So the area of Lynn's copy was 16 times larger than the area of triangle A. B. What scale factor did Lynn apply to the triangle A to create the copy? The area of Lynn's scaled copy was 72 square units. 72 is half of 144, and I know that 12 times 12 equals 144. So if the base was 12 and the height was 12, the area of Lynn's triangle would be half of base times height, or half of 12 times 12. 12 times 12 is 144, half of 144 is 72. So to figure out the scale factor, I'm going to compare the base of triangle A with the base of Lin's scaled copy. The base of triangle A is 3, and the base of Lin's scaled copy is 12. 12 is exactly 4 times greater than 3. So the scale factor that Lin used was 4. 
C. What is the length of the bottom side of the scaled copy? Here's another look at my drawing of Lin's scaled copy of triangle A. The base, or the bottom length, is 12 units. Seventh grade, Unit 1, Lesson 8, Scale Drawings and Maps. Number 1. Here is a map that shows parts of Texas and Oklahoma. A. About how far is it from Amarillo to Oklahoma City? Explain your reasoning. Here's the key on the map that shows the relative distance of 60 miles on the map. We can see how many times this distance fits between Amarillo and Oklahoma City. It fits just about perfectly four times. 60 times 4 is 240. The distance between the two cities is approximately 240 miles. But you'll notice that the road isn't straight, so you could add a few miles to that. The actual driving distance might be closer to 260 miles or 270 miles. B. Driving at a constant speed of 70 miles per hour, will it be possible to make this trip in three hours? Explain how you know. A distance of 240 miles divided by 70 miles an hour equals more than three hours of driving, so the answer is no. Even driving in a straight line, the trip would take longer than three hours. Number two. A local park is in the shape of a square. A map of the local park is made with the scale 1 inch to 200 feet. A. If the park is shown as a square on the map, each side of which is 1 foot long, how long is each side of the square park? We know that there are 12 inches and 1 foot, and 12 multiplied by 200 equals 2400 or 2400. So the length of each side of the park is 2,400 feet. B. If a straight path in the park is 900 feet long, how long would the path be when represented on the map? 900 feet divided by 200 feet equals 4.5. The length of the path on the map would be 4 and 5 tenths inches or four and a half inches. Seventh grade, unit one, lesson nine, creating scale drawings. Number 1. An image of a book shown on a website is 1 and 5 tenths inches wide and 3 inches tall on a computer monitor. The actual book is 9 inches wide. A. What scale is being used for the image? Well, the actual book is 9 inches wide and it was only 1 and 5 tenths inches wide on the computer monitor. So 9 divided by 1 and 5 tenths equals 6. The scale is 1 inch to 6 inches. Or you could say the scale is 1 to 6. B. How tall is the actual book? I'm going to use the information they provided. For the scaled copy on the computer monitor, the width is 1 and 5 tenths, the height is 3, and the scale is 1 to 6. Using the scale, we can determine the width and the height. 1 and 5 tenths times 6 equals 9, and 3 times 6 equals 18. The book is 18 inches tall. Number 2. The flag of Columbia is a rectangle that is 6 feet long, 
with three horizontal stripes. The top stripe is two feet tall and is yellow. The middle stripe is one foot tall and is blue. The bottom stripe is also one foot tall and is red. A. Create a scale drawing of the Colombian flag with a scale of one centimeter to two feet. This image represents the actual Colombian flag that's six feet wide. I've divided this up into three separate sections, each two feet long. For every two feet of the actual flag, one centimeter would be represented on the scale drawing. The height of the actual flag is four feet tall. Here it's been separated into two feet, one foot, and one foot. So for every two feet, one centimeter is represented on the scale drawing. So here's a look at the scale drawing of the flag. It's three centimeters long and two centimeters tall. The red stripe is five tenths of a centimeter tall or a half inch. So is the blue stripe and the yellow stripe is one centimeter tall. B. Create a scale drawing of the Colombian flag with a scale of two centimeters to one foot. Again, here's a look at the actual Colombian flag, six feet long and four feet tall. Since the scale of this drawing is going to be two centimeters for every one foot, the six foot section would have 12 centimeters because six times two is 12, and the four foot section would be eight centimeters because four times two is eight. The red stripe would be two centimeters tall and so would the blue stripe. The yellow stripe would be four centimeters tall. Number three, these triangles are scaled copies of each other. For each pair of triangles listed, the area of the second triangle is how many times larger than the area of the first? A, triangle G and triangle F. Triangle G was the first triangle mentioned and triangle F was the second triangle mentioned. So they're asking how many times larger is triangle F than triangle G? First, we need to find the area of both the triangles. Triangle G, the area is going to be half of four times three or half of 12. The area for triangle G is six square units. The area for triangle F will be half of eight times six or half of 48. Half of 48 is 24, so the area for triangle F is 24 square units. So to figure out how many times larger the area is of triangle F compared to triangle G, we simply divide 24 and six, or 24 divided by six. 24 divided by six is four. So the area of triangle F is four times the size of the area of triangle G. B, triangle G and triangle B. Triangle G is the first triangle mentioned, and triangle B is the second triangle mentioned. The area for triangle G will be half of four times three, or half of 12, which is six square units, and the area for triangle B will be half of two times three halves, or six halves divided by two. Six halves is three, and three divided by two is three halves, or 1.5, which is one and five tenths. The area for triangle B is one and five tenths. So the question is, how many times bigger is the second triangle than the first? Or how many times bigger is triangle B compared to triangle G? Which is interesting because B is actually smaller than G. The area of triangle B divided by the area of triangle G or 1.5 divided by six and 1.5 divided by six is one fourth. The area of triangle B is one fourth the size of the area of triangle G. C, triangle B and triangle F. Triangle B is the first triangle mentioned and triangle F is the second triangle mentioned. 
The area of triangle B is half of 2 times 3 halves, or half of 6 divided by 2, which is the same as 3 divided by 2. And again, 3 halves, or 3 divided by 2, is equal to 1.5, or 1 and 5 tenths. The area of triangle B is 1 and 5 tenths square units. The area of triangle F is half of 8 times 6, or half of 48. Half of 48 is 24, so the area of triangle F is 24 square units. So the question is, how much larger is the area of triangle F compared to the area of triangle B? That's the same as asking 24 divided by 1.5. And 24 divided by 1.5 is 16. The area of triangle F is 16 times larger than the area of triangle B. D. Triangle F and triangle H. On the left is triangle F. It was the first one mentioned. On the right is triangle H. It was the second triangle mentioned. The area for triangle H is half the base times the height. The base is 2, so half the base would be 1, and 1 times the height, or 1 times 8 thirds, equals 8 thirds. So the area of triangle H is 8 thirds square units. The area of triangle F, like always, is half of the base times the height, and in this case, half the base is 3, so 3 times the height, or 3 times 8, and 3 times 8 is 24, so the area of triangle F is 24 square units. Since triangle H was the second one mentioned, we're trying to figure out how much larger the area of triangle H is compared to the area of triangle F. Now it's interesting because triangle H is much smaller, but anyway to figure that out we need to divide the area of triangle H by the area of triangle F. 8 thirds divided by 24 8 thirds divided by 24 is 1 ninth. The area for triangle H is 1 ninth the size of the area of triangle F. E. Triangle G and triangle H. On the left is triangle G. It was the first triangle mentioned. And on the right is triangle H. It was the second triangle mentioned. The area for triangle H is 8 thirds square units and the area for triangle G is 6 square units. We need to determine how much larger triangle H is compared to triangle G. Again, triangle H is actually smaller than triangle G, but we still need to do the division. 8 thirds divided by 6, which is the same as 8 thirds divided by 6 over 1 or 8 thirds times the reciprocal of 6 over 1, which is 1 6. So we have 8 thirds times 1 6. And 8 thirds times 1 6 equals 4 ninths. So the area of triangle H is 4 ninths the size of the area of triangle G. Triangle H and triangle B. On the right is triangle H. It was mentioned first. And on the left is triangle B. It was mentioned second. The area for triangle H is 8 thirds square units, and the area for triangle B is 3 halves square units, or 1.5 square units. We're trying to figure out how much larger the area is for triangle B compared to triangle H. So the area of triangle B, 3 halves, divided by the area of triangle H, 8 thirds. 3 halves divided by 8 thirds. That's the same as multiplying 3 halves times 3 eighths. 3 halves times 3 eighths equals 9 sixteenths. The area of triangle B is 9 sixteenths the size of the area for triangle H. Number 4. Here is an unlabeled rectangle followed by other quadrilaterals that are labeled. A. Select all quadrilaterals that are scaled copies of the unlabeled rectangle. Explain how you know. I've drawn out the unlabeled rectangle in blue and I went ahead and labeled its dimensions. It's four units wide and two units tall, or it has a base of four units and a height of two units. 
potential scaled copies for the unlabeled rectangle that has dimensions of 2 by 4 would be 1 by 2, 2 by 4, 3 by 6, 4 by 8, or 5 by 10. I filled in the dimensions for the other quadrilaterals that were rectangles. I'm not selecting A or F because they're not rectangles. And I'm not selecting rectangles B or G because they don't have the right dimensions. I am choosing rectangles C, D, and H because they are scaled copies of the unlabeled rectangle. B. On graph paper, draw a different scaled version of the original rectangle. I've decided to draw one with dimensions that are 5 by 10. Here's a scaled copy of the original unlabeled rectangle. It has a base of 10 and a height of 5. Seventh grade, Unit 1, Lesson 10, Changing Scales in Scale Drawings. Number 1. Here is a scale drawing of a swimming pool where 1 centimeter represents 1 meter. A. How long and how wide is the actual swimming pool? The scale drawing of the swimming pool is 10 centimeters long and 5 centimeters wide. So the actual swimming pool would be 10 meters long and 5 meters wide. B. Will a scale drawing where 1 centimeter represents 2 meters be larger or smaller than this drawing? It will be smaller. It will take fewer centimeters to represent width and length. C. Make a scale drawing of the swimming pool where one centimeter represents two meters. This is the scale drawing that was used when one centimeter represented one meter. I need to make some adjustments so that one centimeter would represent two meters. The length and the width will each be half as long as the scale drawing. So the new scale drawing of the swimming pool will be five centimeters long and two and five tenths centimeters wide. Number 2. A map of a park has a scale of 1 inch to 1,000 feet. Another map of the same park has a scale of 1 inch to 500 feet. Which map is larger? Explain or show your reasoning. The map with a scale of 1 inch to 500 feet is larger. It takes twice the number of units to represent the distance compared to the map with a scale of 1 inch to 1,000 feet. Number 3. On a map with a scale of 1 inch to 12 feet, the area of a restaurant is 60 inches squared. Han says that the actual area of the restaurant is 720 feet squared. Do you agree or disagree? Explain your reasoning. I disagree. Using a scale of 1 inch to 12 feet, every 1 square inch represents 144 square feet and 60 times 144 equals 8,640, not 720. The area of the restaurant would be 8,640 square feet, not 720 square feet. Number 4. If quadrilateral Q is a scaled copy of quadrilateral P, created with a scale factor of 3, what is the perimeter of Q? I've outlined the perimeter in red. We can tell that the perimeter of quadrilateral P is 62 by adding up all the side lengths. The perimeter of quadrilateral Q is going to be 62 times 3 since it was created with a scale factor of 3 and 62 times 3 is 186. The perimeter of Q is 186 units. Number 5. Triangle DEF is a scaled copy of triangle ABC. For each of the following parts of triangle ABC, identify the corresponding part of triangle DEF. 
angle A, B, C. Angle A and angle D are corresponding angles. Angles B and E are corresponding angles. And angles C and F are corresponding angles. So the order D, E, F corresponds with the order A, B, C. Angle B, C, A. B and E, C and F, A and D. Angles E, F, D correspond with B, C, A. Segment A, C. A with D and C with F. Segment D, F corresponds with segment A, C. Segment B, A. Angle B corresponds with angle E and angle A corresponds with angle D. Segment ED corresponds with segment BA. Seventh grade, Unit 1, Lesson 11, Scales Without Units. Number 1. A scale drawing of a car is presented in the following three scales. Order the scale drawings from smallest to largest. Explain your reasoning. There are about 1 and 1 tenth yards in a meter and 2 and 54 hundredths centimeters in an inch. One foot is 12 inches, one yard is 36 inches, and one meter is 39 and 37 hundredths inches. The smallest scale drawing would be B, one inch to one meter. The next smallest scale drawing will be C, one inch to one yard. And the largest of the scale drawings will be A, one inch to one foot. A drawing with a scale of one inch to one foot will require the most number of units and will be the largest drawing. Number two, which scales are equivalent to one inch to one foot? Select all that apply. One inch to one foot is the same as one inch to 12 inches. So A, one to 12 would be equivalent to one inch to one foot. 1 inch divided by 12 would be 1 twelfth of an inch, and 12 inches divided by 12 would be 1 inch, so B is also equivalent. 1 inch times 100 equals 100 inches, and 12 inches times 100 equals 1,200 inches. Since 1,200 inches is not the same as 12 hundredths of an inch, C is not equivalent. 1 inch times 5 equals 5 inches, and 12 inches times 5 equals 60 inches, so D, 5 to 60, is equivalent. 1 inch times 36 equals 36, and 12 times 36 equals 432. Since 432 does not equal 3, E is not equivalent. 1 times 9 is 9, and 12 times 9 is 108. So F, 9 to 108, is equivalent to 1 inch to 1 foot. Number 3. A model airplane is built at a scale of 1 to 72. If the model plane is 8 inches long, how many feet long is the actual airplane? 48 feet long. The actual airplane is 72 times the length of the scale model. 8 inches times 72 is 576 inches, and 576 inches is 48 feet. Number 4. Quadrilateral A has side lengths 3, 6, 6, and 9. Quadrilateral B is a scaled copy of A with a shortest side length equal to 2. Jada says, since the side lengths go down by 1 in this scaling, the perimeter goes down by 4 in total. Do you agree with Jada? Explain your reasoning.
No, I don't agree with Jada. The side lengths of B aren't one less than the side lengths of A. The side lengths of B are two-thirds the side lengths of A. The side lengths of B must be 2, 4, 4, and 6, and has a perimeter of 16. Number 5. Polygon B is a scaled copy of polygon A using a scale factor of 5. Polygon A's area is what fraction of polygon B's area? I've illustrated an example of polygon A that has an area of 4 units and of polygon B that has an area of 100 units. A side length of polygon A is 2 units and the side length of polygon B is 5 times that or 10 units. Since 4 times 25 equals 100, polygon A's area is 1 25th the size of polygon B's area. Polygon A's area is 1 25th of the area of polygon B. Number 6. Figures R, S, and T are all scaled copies of one another. Figure S is a scaled copy of R using a scale factor of 3. Figure T is a scale copy of S using a scale factor of 2. Find the scale factors for each of the following. A. From T to S. I modeled R, S, and T. R has a side length of 1, S has a side length of 3, and T has a side length of 6. To go from T to S is just like going from 6 to 3, and going from 6 to 3 is a half scale factor, since 3 is half of 6. B. From S to R. Going from S to R is like going from 3 to 1. Since 1 is one third of 3, the scale factor is 1 third. C. From R to T. Going from R to T is like going from 1 to 6. And since 6 is 6 times greater than 1, it's a scale factor of 6. D. From T to R. Going from T to R is like going from 6 to 1. And since 1 is 6 times smaller than 6, it's a scale factor of 1 sixth.
Seventh grade, unit one, lesson 12, units in scale drawings. Number one, the Empire State Building in New York City is about 1,450 feet high, including the antenna at the top, and 400 feet wide. Andre wants to make a scale drawing of the front view of the Empire State Building on an 8.5 inch by 11 inch piece of paper. Select the scale that you think is the most appropriate for the scale drawing. Explain your reasoning. The scales couldn't be either of the scales mentioned in A, B, or D because those scale drawings would be too large to fit on an 8.5 by 11 inch piece of paper. They wouldn't be either of the scales mentioned on C or F either because those scale drawings would be way too small. That leaves E, a scale of 1 centimeter to 50 meters. The scale drawing height is about 10 centimeters and the width is about 3 centimeters. And that would be large enough to see and small enough to fit on an 8.5 inch by 11 inch piece of paper. Number 2. Elena finds that the area of a house on a scale drawing is 25 square inches. The actual area of the house is 2,025 square feet. What is the scale of the drawing? 2,025 divided by 25 equals 81. And 9 times 9 equals 81. The scale of the drawing would be 1 inch to 9 feet. Number 3. Which of these scales are equivalent to 3 centimeters to 4 kilometers? Select all that apply. Recall that 1 inch is 2 and 54 hundredths centimeters. Divide 4 kilometers by 4 and you get 1 kilometer. And divide 3 centimeters by 4 and you have 3 fourths centimeters or 75 hundredths centimeters. So A is equivalent. Divide 4 kilometers by 100 and you get 40 meters and divide 3 centimeters by 100 and you get 3 tenths of a millimeter. So D is equivalent. These two triangles are scaled copies of one another. The area of the smaller triangle is 9 square units. What is the area of the larger triangle? Explain or show how you know. The area of the larger triangle is 36 square units. Since the lengths are two times the lengths of the original, the area would be four times that of the original area. Number 5. Water costs $1.25 per bottle. At this rate, what is the cost of? A. 10 bottles. At this rate, 10 bottles would cost $12.50 because 10 times 1 and 25 hundredths is 12 and 5 tenths. At this rate, what is the cost of B, 20 bottles? The cost of 20 bottles would be $25 because 20 times 1 and 25 hundredths is 25. At this rate, what is the cost of C, 50 bottles? At this rate, the cost of 50 bottles would be $62.50 because 50 times 1 and 25 hundredths is 62 and 5 tenths. Number 6. The first row of the table shows the amount of dish detergent and water needed to make a soap solution. A. Complete the table for 2, 3, and 4 batches. 1 batch times 2 is 2, 6 cups of water times 2 is 12, and 1 cup of detergent times 2 is 2. Four batches would be double two batches. So if two batches called for 12 cups of water, 
then four batches would call for 24 cups of water. If two batches called for two cups of detergent, then four batches would call for four cups of detergent. Three batches would be the same as one batch plus two batches. There are six cups of water in one batch and 12 cups of water in two batches. So six plus 12 equals 18. So in three batches, you would need 18 cups of water. And one batch called for one cup of detergent, two batches called for two cups of detergent, so three batches would call for three cups of detergent. B. How much water and detergent is needed for eight batches? Explain your reasoning. 48 cups of water and 8 cups of dish detergent. 8 batches is twice that of 4 batches.